But do you believe that diabetes increases your risk of, of heart? The two things are absolutely connected, clearly, because they are both okay. inflammatory disorders. Okay. If you have high blood pressure, does that increase your risk of heart of heart and cardiac? Absolutely. Okay. If you have had a previous heart attack, does that increase your risk of a cardiac? Yes. Okay. Can you provide me the evidence for that? Yes. Okay. Instead of us going down evidence that we both agree on, can we both say that we both agree on those two factors, on all of these factors that I've just I've just given you my absolute agreement on all of those factors. Can we move on? Okay. So if the individuals with lower LDL have higher rates of having had a previous heart attack, and having had a previous history of diabetes pressure and kidney disease, would it mean that they've probably got a higher propensity and that are at higher risk of having another cardiac event? Yes. Okay, that is my point. But that, that has, no, that has no bearing on what we are discussing. Jesus Christ. Okay, yeah, exactly. If you and I... Yeah, yeah, I mean, for fuck's just... sake, mate, what are you talking about here? We are talking about people on a normal distribution curve who have lower LDL than some other people and higher than others again. They are members of and representative of a group of people who have been admitted with these events. Okay. If LDL... And if the individuals... If the individuals get, let me finish. Have... I'll let me finish. Let me finish then we would get a straight line, okay? We have not got a straight line. I'm saying that uncouples causality, and you're saying, oh, no, it doesn't, because there are confounds that are causing this to be a normal distribution, to which I'm calling bullshit. Okay, so have you agreed that the individuals in with the lower LDL have all of the confounding factors that I've stated and that we agree, which increase your risk of cardiovascular Okay, you're breaking up. Try that again for me. Okay. Do you you already agree on founding factors which risk which increase your risk of cardiovascular, correct? So we agreed on those. We agreed on those things, list of things that you mentioned. Yeah. You gave me a list of things yeah. that are those things associated with a higher risk of events and secondary events and I said So all of those things, the individuals that have lower LDLs have a higher propensity for all of those things. No, not at all. No, I don't accept that remotely. Not at all. No. You, don't, you don't accept that this study shows that people that no, have lower LDLs... does not show that all the people with low LDL have also... I, I didn't say LDL. all. I didn't say all. Stop strong. You did. That's exactly what you said. Those were your words. They have lower LDLs have a higher propensity for the risk factors that we've discussed and agreed upon, yeah? No. All right, so that's where the disagreement lies. So I'm just going to post this, this table. Okay, so everyone can just look in the general. It just gives you um, explanation as well. So individuals with, as, as LDL goes down, there's a higher uh, occurrence of previous heart attacks, higher occurrence of being on lipid lower medication, higher occurrence of high blood pressure, higher occurrence of diabetes, history of higher occurrence of um, kidney disease. And yet these people are less represented percentage-wise in the people who are being hospitalised, not more. No. Uh, that's. Uh, uh, I've got a head, guys. Um, so it's okay. I can step in here for a uh, for a minute if if you're gone. Jesus Christ! So 
Uh, I'm interested in one of the studies you posted, but I just wanted to say something first off. In your opening statement, like the, the way you framed uh, this debate, it's kind of like you said in possibly high standards, like you want deductive, like the science science can't give you deductive causal, like the level of causation that you're requiring. So I just want to know where your goalpost. Okay, the goalpost is very simple. They're not my goalposts. They are the goalposts of science. Science is a design. Okay, science science can only give you induction though. Like we can yeah, only yeah. like strongly. Uh, gives a strong like ninety nine point nine nine percent like correlation, but we can never accurately to like the way you're using the word give like a deductive. Correct, and therefore what we should be talking about is hypotheses, theories, ideas, and not facts. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. With, so. With, so. Your standard. Is, fact, like, excuse me. If someone says fact. LDL is causal in heart disease, based on what you have just said and agreed to me on, you have to say, uh-uh, it's a theory. Uh, well, by this standard, like, we can't say that, like, smoking causes lung cancer, we can't, we can't, yeah, yeah. so we Correct. can't say, can uh, say that. so if you frame the debate, like, unfairly, where the goalpost is excessively high, uh, like, I'm There's not nothing going to unfair you, but... about objectively defining terms using scientific discipline and using words to mean what they mean. Causality is clearly defined in the dictionary. To cause means makes something happen, end of discussion, fact. Yeah, well, the, the language that I'll I use... Can't do that. Sorry. There is a theory uh, that LDL is causally involved in heart disease. It's a pathetic theory. It's a piss poor theory. There's not much science to support it, actually. And in fact, there are a number of reasons to refute it quite strongly. But that's where we need to be with this. Uh, so can I just get you on record saying you can't prove smoking causes lung cancer then? Like, is that the standard we're going to... Is that relevant to this debate whatsoever? Well, I just want to know if it's possible to, to prove anything through the scientific method. Okay, uh, science can't even prove you exist, my friend. Okay, so that... In, in fact, in yeah, fact science, science demands that you do not exist. So there's over 6,000 studies on smoking and, like, its health implications, and... So? Yeah, so I could say, by my standard, that... Smoking definitely causes lung cancer, but and you'd be wrong. Standard. That would be a mistake, and that would be ill-disciplined and unscientific of you because science. Yeah, so you frame the debate unfairly. So I guess if, no, if you're not going to no, no, I posed a very clear, very easily defined question. The question was, can you provide some evidence that LDL causes atherosclerosis, heart disease in human beings? And the answer is no. Okay, but it's impossible to show... That is, that is largely my point. It is impossible to show the exact thing that I asked you, whether there is an effect or not, to which most of you people are happy to say, yes, there's absolute proof. Yes, this is absolutely established. Yes, this, yes, that, yes, the other thing, no question. And it's a load of fucking bullshit. You have not supplied the evidence. Well, we can get on to, like why you think high LDL is fine, uh, but I just want to get this on the table first, that first off, it's going to be impossible by your standard to actually show the, the level of causation that you're asking for, because we can't even... Correct, it is impossible, yeah. that's the whole point, that's why I take so, it about in the first place, because I cannot lose. Okay, well, just the way you're framing your goalposts uh, is just unfair, so I want to know what your lose condition... Big pardon? I just want to know what your lose condition would be. Like, how strong of a correlation would you have to, would I have to provide to show that we can infer causation, not deductively okay. show? Okay, listen, listen. When you go to school and learn science, by which I mean postgraduate, oh, sorry, post tertiary, I'm talking about when you go to a university or college, as you might call it, and you start studying for a degree in science. Day one, they teach you this one. 
Causality can never, ever, ever be established by correlation, no matter how strong. So the answer is there is no correlation you can show me that will establish causality. The only way you will be able to infer causality in a manner that I would remotely accept is if you can show me a very, very, very strong correlation which also satisfies all nine of the Bradford Hill criteria. Failing that, we are done and you lose. So I'm just looking at the Bradford Hill, like the nine. Sorry, the, nine. the Bradford Hill criteria are a list of nine conditions that need to be met with regard to associative data before you can even start to think about whether causality might possibly be in effect or not. And if you fail any one of those nine criteria, the discussion is finished. Causality is eliminated. It is not in effect. So it's an absolute all nine or you fail one and the discussion is finished. Okay, so I have a bunch of science lined up, but I'm not going to like descend into this madness with you because you framed the debate unfairly where you it's impossible for you to lose. So just based on that, like I don't have to waste my time with this. Uh, you haven't even provided like why you think high LDL is fine. That's because we haven't got to that yet because you haven't even started to scratch the surface on why you would believe LDL elevation is a problem. And we haven't talked about the mechanisms of atherosclerosis. We haven't talked about atherogenesis. We haven't talked about any of the biochemistry whatsoever. All we've done is me going backwards and forwards with some fucking inane Australian who clearly didn't actually even, wasn't even able to logically understand what the fuck I was saying, let alone what he was saying. And then you come on and start talking to me and saying, oh, this is not fair. This is very fair. Uh, it's clear. Your own admission. It's absolutely okay. fair and clear. I said at the outset, I am inviting someone to come on here and prove me wrong. Uh, under you the, said, under, the, under the absolute fact that I know in advance that you can't do it because I understand science, because I'm the one that's a scientist here, and I'm the one that's not getting any respect from you people telling me I'm some kind of correct and don't understand what's going on here because the consensus says otherwise. Well, let's look at the actual scientific facts here, and they are absolutely clear. The facts are science is a discipline, and if you want to talk about causality, you better meet the criteria, and this hypothesis fails. No, but just one second, just for curiosity's sake, right? Now I'm just going to dip. I just, want to, I just wanted to understand why these criteria are, like, what's the analysis that, enables you to say that these are the criteria that we should accept, right? Like, what's kind of the explanation for why these people should just, <clears throat> um, I don't know, bow down to your request of you of them accepting, like, those specific criteria, right? Or that uh, mechanism for causation. The Bart, K, the Bart K criteria? No, I said it's the Bradford Hill criteria. Do a wiki on it. It's a well-established well, process. We're doing it's a, a well-established discipline in science for those that actually follow science. And what it is, is it says if you have an association between factor A and factor B and you want to assert that there is any chance whatsoever that those two factors are causally interactive with each other, then you meet all nine criteria or you dismiss that hypothesis. Yeah, look, look, just calm down, right? All I said... I'm absolutely yeah. calm. Yeah, then why aren't you letting me talk, right? I was just saying... Um, look, like I'm saying just, I'm that... I'm not letting you talk. I'm finishing what I'm saying, and then I'm taking my finger off the button, and you can say what you have to say, and I'm letting you say it. Can I? No. Apparently. Um, look, my question was, what's the mechanism by which you establish that these criteria, right, are the criteria that everyone should follow, right, regarding causation? I wasn't asking you if it's available on Wikipedia, right? Presumably it is, right? But if you have a reason for why we should accept these criteria, then provide it. If not, just like say no and it's fine. Oh, okay. So I understand what you're saying. It's an appeal to authority. It's an accepted discipline. No, I didn't no, say it's right. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying it's an appeal to authority. The Bradford, the Bradford Hill criteria are a set of criteria that are generally accepted by scientists. That's my appeal to authority. That's what it is. You can, you can oh, put some other criteria for it if you like. But be prepared 
that that will be open to peer review, basically. Yeah, yeah, no, fine. I was just asking whether or not he had access to the knowledge for why this these criteria are like accepted in the community, right? Well, that's why, because they're accepted as such and they've been around for a very long time. That's not an explanation to say that no, they're accepted by the community because they're accepted by the community. It just seems like very good for me. Authority. All right. So 95% of the scientific community uh, just goes with the correlation data that we have now. So I I guess you're part of like the 5% of cholesterol deniers. I, I'm not sure about your position, so I'm not going to like assume it. But the whole okay, reason you're here. Well, you just did, and you also just used a slur, basically. The whole word denier is actually drawn from Nazi Germany. And what you're actually inferring is that anyone that doesn't go along with the correlation, anyone that doesn't go along with this whole consensus idea, is some kind of Nazi. What the fuck? Ex well, exactly. What the fuck? That's the response you get from people when you say denier. Okay, I'm not Look, are you under the impression that the word denier comes from I'm Nazi Germany? I'm inviting you to provide some evidence, and you're not providing a damn thing. I didn't say anything. I didn't make any claim. I was just like curious about the Nazi thing. It doesn't seem like um, <laughs> something that's going to end up being true, you know? That the word denier is like originally Look it up. discussions Look it up. of... Or it has a Nazi. meaning... The word has been misappropriated, the word has been bastardized, the word has been stolen from the English language, and it now has a very clear implication. When you say someone is a cholesterol denier or a climate change denier or a flat earth denier or a round earth denier, you are calling them a Nazi. All right, I think that's an association fallacy. Uh, I'm not really sure. Uh, okay, sorry. Anywho, I'm not a Nazi, and neither neither am i in the wrong just because there might be a certain number whether it's 95 percent or 40 percent or 60 percent or whatever it is who might have a view that's antithetical to mine it doesn't matter the only thing that matters is whose view can be supported according to the disciplines of science and to do that you need to use empirical data you cannot use social proof and that includes Consensus. There is no place for consensus in science whatsoever. None. Right, so yeah, this is how it's consensus when talking about the criteria, if I remember correctly, right? Say again? Wasn't your justification for using the criteria that it's consensus? Yeah, so it's an appeal to authority. That's why it's there. Yeah, I mean, you can dismiss those criteria if you like. I respect your right to do that. You go ahead and dismiss those criteria. Uh, I didn't say that I dismissed the criteria. It just seems like you're using a double standard there. <clears throat> if you're just no, seeing, too. I'm saying look, I was talking, I think. What I said there was an appeal to I was authority. Shit whether you accept it or not. All right. So the way that this would go if I did, like, get divulge into this with you is I can show like a 99% correlation and then you're still going to reject it and then claim that I lost the debate because you framed it in, as your own admission, your own words unfairly. Like it's impossible for you to lose. So why should I do that's that? That's not unfair. The fact that one person is in, it's not possible for me to lose, that, that's got nothing to do with fairness, which is another way of talking about justice. There is no justice involved here. There are only the facts as establishable by science. Science is a discipline. Science requires if you want to say this is causal in that, you have to provide that proof. You can't do it. Yeah, because the scientific method is inductive by your own words. You know that it's not deductive, which would could show a ca causation, like what you're asking for. It's an impossible standard. So uh, why well, should it's I not really a standard? It's just a standard that won't be applied because ethics won't allow us to do it. So in order for the governor, governor general, to come out against. Uh, and just declare that smoking causes cancer, there had to be 6,000 studies concluding on that side. So uh, 6,000 studies is at the level. Heart disease. We are not talking about smoking and lung cancer. Okay, but uh, to that level that you're speaking of, we need 6,000 studies on LDL. No number of studies will do it unless they are studies which experimentally prove 
the case. And they will never be done because ethics will not allow it. I mean, we're very good ones. We have no, you excellent don't. ones. So we, we have a few excellent ones that I'm, I'm prepared no, to show you. All right. So this guy this guy's just a waste of my time. So I tried. Like, I'm trying to get into it with you, but you're not willing to move your goalposts. So My goalposts are not the problem. The problem is the statement you people are making, and you people... What I mean by you people, no, I never people mean who that. support I never the mean LDL hypothesis and put it forward as some kind of a fact. It is not a fact, it's a hypothesis, and it's a fucking stupid one. And if you want to talk about why, we can get into that. But if you're going to start out by saying, oh, this isn't fair in the first place, well, go and cry to your mum. That's not my fucking problem. Yeah, the, a fair way of, of framing it would be, LDL, you would come into the debate and make a positive claim. Uh, and that that would be what you debate over. So, so you would say like LDL doesn't cause heart disease, or there's there's no you'd frame it just in a fair way where you can show your data, we can compare it and actually like look objectively at like each other's data and just compare it. Okay. And so if, I can, mean, if I can prove to you absolutely unquestioningly, without any shadow of a doubt whatsoever, in a way that you will absolutely be um, uh, compelled to accept my argument, if I say to you LDL does not cause heart disease and i can prove that to you will you then accept that you've been you've had your ass handed to you in this debate i mean i've got my own uh conflicting data with that so i'm not going to agree with that did you listen to what like, I, just said? So, uh, I mean if you could show me six thousand studies that say that it doesn't cause heart disease that's your standard so okay I don't even need six thousand studies i don't even need one i can prove to you ldl does not cause heart disease in about two minutes if you want to listen to the explanation in a way that you will absolutely have to accept unless you are absolutely mentally retarded let's hear it let's hear it yeah go for it here we go very very simple what exact substance is thought to be an insult to the immune system and that being the start of the cascade of events that leads to atherosclerosis heart disease what exact substance is the problem oh, do you mean like that what triggers a heart attack well it's, it's an oxidative, oh, oxidative oh strat oh my god we're talking about what starts the process of atherosclerosis? If you don't even know what that is, why are you the one that's debating me on this topic? Well, it's it's plaque. So I know perfectly well what atherosclerosis is. Uh, okay, uh, so how does that process get started then, Charlie Brown? How does plaque start forming? What causes that? I would, I would des describe it as like a supersaturation of the blood, so... The plaques made up of. Okay, can I talk, talk to someone who has any idea whatsoever about atherogenesis? Because this guy doesn't. Is there anybody here who understands how atherogenesis starts? I mean, this guy's just saying yeah. words now, but nothing whatsoever to do with the actual biological processes involved. Who is this guy? Who are you? Well, just start being. Why are you doing this? Yeah, so just quickly, it's. it's platelets, okay, then you get fibrin, fibrinogen, and several other factors that come in, which result in some capping, and that process just continues. No, several no, factors. no, no, no. Where did you get that from? Medical school? Okay, then, genius, let's, let's hear What starts with the process of atherosclerosis from the very beginning? We've heard you, we've heard you already, we've heard you already ask the question, just answer. You asked the question then. You're, you're telling me it's platelets. Yeah. It's nothing to do with it, clown. You're, you're asking the question, okay, and you've already rejected all the answers, so answer. Okay, let me give you a hint since you're such a genius. A plaque's made up of cholesterol. Something has to get bound to the microcalyx on the epithelial cells. What is that? Uh, I'm just going to say cholesterol. Uh, that's the wrong answer. Uh, yeah, you knew that was going to be the wrong answer, didn't you? 
to look, um, but it seems like you had asked a question. They gave you an answer they were unsatisfied with. So, so why don't you just give like a full account so at least people can be educated by your knowledge, right? Okay, great. The process of events that starts atherosclerosis has been well documented in the literature. It's very, very clear. It's been shown experimentally. It's been well supported. There isn't too much question about this, really. And here's what it is. There are a number of different sorts of protein sugar type molecules that make up a sort of foresty, long grassy type structure that coats the outside of the cells that line the vasculature. It's called the microcalyx. What those molecules do is they recognize and bind to various things. In other words, sequestering those things from the flow of the blood and binding them up at the surface of the cell for use. One of those things that is grabbed by the cells are particles of LDL cholesterol. And what is being bound is the ApoB100 protein. Okay? What causes the ApoB100 protein to bind to the microcalyces of the epithelial cells? It's inflammation. What's inflammation? Inflammation is a cascade of events caused by either uh, invasion of the body by pathogens, uh, mechanical damage to the tissues involved, and various things that cause a cascade of events around various phosphorylation states of various intermediate trees, thus setting up a situation where the microcalyx is activated and will grab these cholesterol particles out of the bloodstream and bind them at the surface of the cells. The normal course of events is that inflammation is self-resolving and resolves after a short period of time once the original uh, insult has passed. The problem with our modern society is that inflammation is not allowed to resolve because of various different things that we have uh, adopted in our modern Western lifestyles. Thus, we have chronic inflammation. Thus, the microcalyces of these epithelial cells never release the ApoB100 protein and the associated cholesterol. And therefore, it is subject to being chemically damaged by one of two things, that being sugar, or indeed other things that will oxidize that ApoB100 protein. That starts the process of atherosclerosis. So the cause of atherosclerosis, or the causes of atherosclerosis, really are inflammation, not LDL cholesterol, and even if it was cholesterol, it's not native cholesterol, it's oxidized or glycated cholesterol, end of debate. Cholesterol does not cause heart disease, even if you want to say, well, it's the oxidized cholesterol, then you have to say oxidized cholesterol causes heart disease. Ergo, you have to say oxidation and inflammation cause heart disease, not LDL, end of debate. Can you provide evidence? Yes, it's in the literature, and I've got plenty of lists of literature on yeah, my system. Okay. okay, send me your email address, and I will, I will flick through to you a list of these references. That's no problem. All right, no problem. And could you put up some of them in just in the general text? I will be putting up a video concerning all of these, well, actually a series of videos concerning all of these. Um, I'm not going to watch I your video, dude. I don't give a shit what you're interested in. You're asking me what's going to be happening. That's what's going to be happening. I'm asking, yeah, no, no, no. The burden of proof is on you, okay? No, it's and I'm not. not watch this no, it isn't. Video. No, it, it is. is. You're the one that's made the not on you me. This. No, it isn't. You made the positive claim. You made the positive claim. The burden of proof is on you. Is that true or not? No, it isn't. No, it isn't. Do you make the positive claim or not? damn thing. Did, Wait, is the burden of proof on you or not? No, it is not. Well, you made the positive claim. Okay, okay. no, just stop, stop, stop for a second. You made the positive claim. Is the burden of proof on you? No, it isn't. I didn't make a positive claim. Okay, I made a claim. then, but... LDL you does made not cause heart disease, and it's isopropyl. You made a positive claim. No, just one second. Just one second. You made a positive claim. 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 You
but you made a positive claim about information provided yet. I just told you, send me an email and I will flick it through to you, no problem. Okay. But do you agree when you make a positive claim that the burden of proof is... Okay, so are you claiming that LDL causes heart disease? Swing and a miss, mate. Okay, so if you make a positive claim, is the burden of proof... You're making claims, I'm saying, ah, uh -uh, Charlie Brown, you're wrong, and here's some reasons why, and if you want to check the veracity of them, you go and fucking check them. I don't give two fucks. That's not how it works. Um, that's not the question I asked you. That's not the question I asked you. I asked you if so someone makes a positive claim, anyway. here's the burden of proof. Who the fuck are you? You don't even have a job anymore, dude. Just shut the fuck up. Oh, the burden of proof is it all the person that makes? Get this fucking clown off here. I've got no interest in talking to this fucking idiot anymore. Fuck off. Oh, hey, hey, yeah. is the burden of proof? No, just one second. Is the burden of proof? Fuck off, fuck off, fuck off, fuck off, fuck off, fuck off, fuck off. Alright, cool. Is the positive claim? Is the burden of proof on the person that makes a positive claim? Fuck off. Is the burden of proof on the individual that makes a positive claim? I'm not talking to you anymore. Anybody else want to talk to me? Fine. I'm not talking to you. Is the burden of proof on the individual that makes? Yeah, I'm not. I I really don't like talking to stupid New Zealanders, but here I am. Is the burden of proof on the individual that makes a positive? Anybody else? Still anybody, point else anybody else at all? Is the burden of proof on the individual that makes the positive? Obviously it is, right? Can we get a one in chat if you think uh, the burden of proof lies on the person making a positive claim? Uh, by the way, uh, Bart, right, there's going to be someone who apparently... Um, my doctor, doctor okay. who's so guys, by the way, ju just just don't, don't let him progress any further. Yeah, Ask right. him if yeah, the right. burden of proof from that one lies on the individual making the positive claim, okay? Because he's just got a big fucking route about talking about inflammation and won't provide any evidence, okay? So and he won't even he won't even just agree with the simple claim, which is does the burden of proof lie on the individual making the positive claim? That is all. Uh, they want not, by the way, I'm not, I'm not going to watch a 70-minute video where he promotes himself for 15 minutes and actually has about 10 minutes of content. Uh, but, um, Bart, uh, they wanted to let you know that uh, some doctor, someone who's uh, like, supposedly qualified, is going to be here in 20 minutes. So maybe if you could um, hang around for that, that would be more interesting for you, maybe. What happens now? I was going to call a night, but I think I'll stay around. I mean, like, just hearing that, uh, he's asking for positive evidence from the vegan side. Uh, he's only opened up the debate, the debate too. And then he's, it's just the double standard. Not only does he have a ridiculously high standard uh, for proof, where he actually admitted it's impossible to beat him in the debate the way he framed it, but now there's the double standard. So I think that's that might be it until the doctor... Well, we looked at... It's probably possible to beat him in the way with the criteria, but I don't see why anyone should be moved, right, to, like, accept those criteria, right, if he doesn't provide, like, some reason for it, right? Um, especially since he was denouncing consensus as being given for a reason to believe things, right? It just seems very yeah. contradictory. And the burden of proof thing was just ridiculous, you know?
I mean, is anyone else thinking, like, in the middle of a debate, just saying, oh, don't worry, I won't provide proof. I'll just make a video about it. Uh, just trust me. Sure, when you don't really understand logic, that happens. Or like debating etiquette, whatever. Is this recorded, by the way, by any chance? Well, I hope so. <laughs> nice.
Hello? Hello? Yeah, can you hear me? I can, no, I can't hear you. Okay, so we've got uh, Dr. Ricky here now. Um, sorry, guys, we'll be back in a sec. Okay, uh, we've got Dr. Ricky here. Um, now, if you guys want, you can uh, start going on your thing. I'll put out a notification. Oh, I was also going to ask, do we have someone recording right now? Apparently, uh, yeah, three, three, three people, apparently. Nice, okay. Um, just give me one sec to put out a notification because people want to see this. Okay, um, Ricky, have we got you there? Yeah. Okay, sweet. Um, Bart, why don't you just convey what you opened with when we started way earlier, just your sort of general case. The topic is um, the, what, L LDL's relation to CBD? Is that a fair way to characterize the topic? Uh, sure. I mean, my, my original starting point right from the very beginning was that there is a school of thought who, for whatever reason, either are absolutely convinced and or want to, for other reasons, support the idea that LDL cholesterol is causal in atherogenesis, atherosclerosis, heart disease. Uh, my position is that that is a position which is A, not proven, B, unable to be proved, and C, fucking ridiculous actually uh, and without any real support of any kind other than associative data and that in fact there are many reasons and many questions that can be posed which cast very serious doubt at least on that hypothesis and several which actually if you want to be really anal about it completely dismiss that hypothesis like the one i was trying to get through to that australian fuck with a few minutes ago so that's my position basically so is your position based on uh, research that you can present? I do work from a standpoint of having been a senior lecturer for 15 years, having been involved in the production of peer-reviewed literature, both as a researcher and also... Sorry, as a sorry, what did you say? Sorry, uh, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You said, uh, uh, what, 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 did, what did you say? I missed the first part of what you said. I said, yes, I work from a standpoint of having been a senior lecturer for the last... Lecturer of what? Uh, many things, uh, mostly in the... In the like what? Well, if you let me... Yeah, you hang on, hang on, hang on, stop answer, interrupting me. Answer, stop bro, interrupting me. Answer. Don't interrupt me. If you want to ask me questions, let me answer them. Okay? My history is in the teaching of cardiovascular pathophysiology... Prior to that, musculoskeletal anatomy and physiology. Prior to that, exercise performance. Okay, they are my professional teaching uh, background. I have a list of peer reviewed publications in physiology uh, and in pathophysiology and in nutrition and in statistics and research methods, actually, if you must know, not to mention a couple of book chapters here and there, and also a quite significant history of external consultancies with major multi-million dollar external organizations to the university. So yes, I do have quite a good grasp of science, actually. And if I need to cite references to things that I'm talking about in my arguments, I can do that. If you send me an email, I can make that available and people can pass those things around if you like. My understanding was that I was here today to have a discussion rather than a debate. If you want to have a debate that has rules, actually, and those rules involve, you know, non-interruption, non-molestation while people are trying to talk, and it involves this time span, and it involves providing all the evidence in terms of your, your um, references in advance. Given that that's not what's happening here, we're having a discussion. Okay, you can treat me with some goddamn respect as a scientist. Thank you very much. And if you want some references, you ask me for them, and I will send you an email with any references you want that back up any of the decisions that I may or may not make here. Is that clear? 
Yeah, that's uh, that's fine with me. Um, so that's that's great that you have a background in it. I appreciate that. Um, my approach with these discussions is is really to to start with high level evidence and uh, you know case control studies, cohort studies, uh, meta analyses, like that kind of thing. Uh, I I love pathophysiology and mechanisms of disease, and I love to discuss that. But the problem is, as you know, in medicine, the mechanisms of disease and physiology doesn't always uh, bear out when we look at uh, high level evidence and uh, large population studies, right? So uh, I think the starting point of this kind of discussion should be at the top of the evidence hierarchy with um, you know high level research, meta-analysis, case control studies, uh, prospective cohort studies. Uh, that's how I would start. Uh, I mean, I, I, I mean, we can get, I don't know if you're interested in mechanism, we can get into mechanism, that's fine, but... Uh, I am I, only, I, only interested in mechanism. I am not interested in anything else but mechanism, because mechanism is what we need to support the claim, and it's not there. Well, actually, that's not, that's not the case. So in medicine, the way it works is that you need, you need high-level uh, research, and, and actually mechanistic data is, is low-level evidence that... Uh, it, 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 it's it, as you know. There's many things that we can demonstrate uh, through clinical trials, clinical research. For example, medications that are effective in certain diseases, and we have no mechanistic data at all. So just because we have an absence of mechanistic data, which in this case we don't, but just because we do have an absence of mechanistic data, does not mean that there's not clinical implications. So from from a medical standpoint. The, the starting point of a discussion uh, about a medical topic should start with the strongest evidence we have. And the strongest evidence we have is not mechanistic evidence. That's not the strongest evidence. The strongest evidence is meta-analysis, case control, prospective cohort studies. So that, that's where I would start the discussion. Okay, how many peer-reviewed publications have you ever been involved in yourself? I have one publication. Okay, how many different journals have you set on the board as a peer reviewer for? Uh, zero. Okay, so you're talking to a scientist who's a senior to you. Okay, so that's the first. Point um, of, I mean, I mean, that's that's not relevant to the discussion. Where I'm what, putting what, it is, what you're doing, I'm, you're claiming I'm, with authority. Hang on, hang on. It is important because you're claiming with authority that where we need to start, and you're claiming that we need to start at what you're calling high level evidence. And I'm going to call bullshit on your high level your high level evidence, and I'm going to call bullshit on your hierarchy of evidence because there's actually nothing to support that other than dogmatic belief. So it's dogmatic mechanistic belief. mechanistic evidence is the evidence you need to prove a case. Okay, this That's debate theory. is about whether LDL cholesterol causes atherosclerosis or whether it doesn't the answer is it does not patently clearly and obviously there is no mechanistic data whatsoever to suggest otherwise and in fact there's plenty of mechanistic data that shows us what does cause it and it's not ldl so the medical model that says we start with this hierarchy and we ignore the mechanism because we've got this thing that seems to work it's absolute nonsense okay well I think rather than, you know, put down our respective expertise onto the table when we're having a discussion, it's more helpful to put down our, our evidence. So when we have a scientific discussion, when there's a discussion between scientists, uh, and I consider myself a scientist as well, I've, I've, I've been involved in science for my whole life, um, it's not helpful to say I'm a senior scientist, I'm a superior scientist. That's not helpful in a, in a scientific discussion. What is helpful is I present my evidence for a claim that I'm making or a hypothesis I'm trying to support. You put down your evidence for, for the hypothesis that you have, and then we analyze the evidence to see what it actually bears out. Uh, going back again to the evidence hierarchy for a second, the reason why the uh, evidence hierarchy is so important uh, and why, it, why it, it, it is relevant in clinical research is because, as you know, what makes evidence valuable, valuable or one of the key things that makes it valuable is st statistical power. So when you have meta-analysis, when you have large studies, you have a lot more uh, patients involved, you have a lot more data involved, and as a study is more powered, it has more ability to produce results that are not due to chance, as you know. So this, this it's one of the cornerstones of research uh, is, is uh, the power of a study, the, the ability of a study to discern 
uh, a real uh, connection, a real uh, disease, a real uh, treatment that's effective, as opposed to simple uh, mechanistic speculation, which which uh, is is much less valuable. Because again, as you know, I don't know how much clinical experience you have or how much uh, with treating patients, but if you do have some clinical experience, you'll know. Uh, that as you uh, take medications, as you take treatments, as you apply uh, medicine to patients, uh, things that we think work a certain way actually don't. You know, uh, for example, uh, you know, uh, relevant to this discussion, uh, you know, statin medications, uh, you know, lower LDL, but we know that there's other mechanisms that are are involved, right? So we think that it works in a certain way, but it may not. It may it, it may not be. Uh, borne out when you look at the actual high-level evidence, right? We think a, a, a drug, for example, has a certain effect A, but then when you research it, at, and, and for example, you know, they may do animal studies that confirm that what we suspect mechanistically, but then when you do a high-level case control study, it, it's, it's not found. When you do a meta-analysis, that association is gone. So that's the problem with starting a discussion with mechanism, is that it's, it may not be borne out when you look at large scale populations, which is, and, and that's the reason why it's most uh, important is because the power allows us to differentiate things that are true from things that are uh, st statistically not significant. Okay, what did they teach you on day one of your undergraduate studies with respect to causation versus association? You, you, you can just keep going. What did they teach you with respect to those two things? The, there's a lot of things. There's nothing specific. There's many, many different things. Many, many, many. There's only one thing they teach you with respect to that on day one in any respectable medical school anywhere in the world. What is it? Hey guys, let's uh, let's keep this. Bet oh, sorry. Was that Bart? I thought there was someone mm -hmm. piping in. Let's keep it just Bart and uh, Ricky. That was me. Sorry, I thought that was someone else. My bad. So, the question stands, what did they teach you, doctor, on your first day of undergraduate studies with respect to causation versus association? I don't recall. <sighs> God's sake. That these two things are not connected. You cannot infer causality from association. It yeah, sure. No, uh, yeah, that's fine. I'm not excuse me, that. I let you finish. It doesn't matter how strong a correlation you've got or how big your sample is or what your statistical power is. It makes no difference whatsoever to the fact that a correlative study cannot now, neither will it in the past, in the future, or any other time ever, provide us with causal proof. To provide causal proof, you need a hypothesis around a mechanistic etiology of the disease process. You need some experimental evidence to support your hypothesis, and you need to show an intervention that works by having an impact on the thing that you've been looking at. That is not the case in the LDL hypothesis. So... You're, you're basically saying that all epi epidemiological research is irrelevant and, and of no value? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying that body of work is unable to inform us on the cause, cause of atherosclerosis in human beings. Yeah, I, I, I have to I have to disagree with you. Uh, I, do you want to actually go into research? Because I have some research we can review together and then we can discuss. Well, you have a bunch of epidemiology. Yeah, I have a, uh, a, a study that looked at genetic, epidemiologic, and clinical studies. Okay, great. And let's go. I'm 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 all good on the Mendelian stuff as well. If you want to go there, let's let you know. Let's have fun. Go for it. Let's talk okay, about it. Okay, I'll po I'll, po I'll post it here in the Discord if you want to open it. Oh, okay. I mean, post it or don't post it, I don't give a shit. Just tell me what's in it and we'll talk about what the problems with it are. Sure, sure. So, 
this study uh, looked at uh, Mendelian randomization studies, randomized trials with two million participants over twenty million person years. I'm just I'm just recapping it because uh, I don't know if you, if it's open here for you. Uh, 150,000 cardiovascular events. Um, anyway, the conclusion here. Uh, consistent evidence from numerous and multiple types of clinical and genetic studies unequivocally establishes that LDL causes uh, atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. Um, so this is a um, relatively newer study too. This is 2017 uh, and published in the European Heart Journal. And so this is the kind of research that I was talking about that, uh, you know, these kinds of uh, large scale uh, meta-analyses of various types of studies as well. Um, to me, it, it really gives us the best best evidence that uh, a, di a disease process is due to a certain particle in the blood. And in this case, it's uh, LDL. Now, if you want to make an argument that um, non-HDL cholesterol is a better marker for cardiovascular disease than LDL, then I would agree with that because there's some research that supports that notion. Uh, but to say that LDL has no role in that, um, I think this study is, is my first, the first thing I would put on the table to suggest that's not the case. Okay, number one, how did me saying that you cannot establish causality between LDL and atherosclerosis, how did that turn into me saying that it plays no role? Oh, so uh, can you, so uh, let me clarify your position. So are you saying that LDL does or does not play a role in atherosclerotic uh, heart disease? I have an opinion on that, but that's my opinion based on my understanding of the science and my interpretation of the science, which is significant. <clears throat> my statement of fact, my irrefutable statement of fact, my moot point from the outset of any debate with anybody on this topic is you cannot establish causality between LDL and atherosclerosis. It is a hypothesis. And if you want to talk about the mechanisms and you want to talk about how it develops, I can show you why it's a fucking stupid idea and why it's very, very unlikely to be correct. And if you want to wave a bunch of epidemiology and Mendelian studies with so many holes in them, you might as well call it a sieve, which we can talk about if you like, then I don't know how to help you. I mean, it, that's a form of indoctrination, and I'm sure that's what you get in medical school. I know that because I've taught more pre-med students than you've probably had hot feeds. Okay, I do know how this stuff works, all right? And when you say mechanism is not important, the only thing that's important is what we can show over large numbers of people, that just shows that you actually have no grasp of science, okay? Science is not about looking at what happens across populations and drawing causal type um, inferences from population data. Science is about explaining things mechanistically. Okay, that's what's missing here. Well, if you want to talk about the mechanisms of atherosclerosis, let's go there. If you want to talk about your Mendelian studies and your epidemiology and stuff, and you want me to basically flame throw that stuff for you because it's a load of fucking bullshit, I'll do that for you. You just tell me which way you want to go. Yeah, the problem... So, first of all, I just want to say that I have a uh, huge interest and passion about mechanism. I absolutely love mechanism. I love pathophysiology. It's my favorite a a aspect of medicine, actually. Absolutely love it. I love rapid review path. Uh, I just love, I love all aspects of it. Um, so that, I just want to get that, uh, get, get that on the table there, just so you know where I'm coming from. Having said that, my the reason why I don't like to start with mechanism is because, to me, it's ignoring the more valuable aspect of the discussion. Now, I didn't say mechanism is completely useless, not at all. I, I recognize that mechanism informs our scientific inquiry and our, and our deeper studying into, you know, deeper clinical analysis and, you know, as I said, the higher level studies. So mechanism is extremely important. Um, but having said that, uh, again, I'll go back to that point, which, uh, again, I, I don't think you commented on, that mechanism does not, that does not necessarily dictate 
what's found in clinical research or what's found at the endpoints, right? So if you have a certain mechanism, a certain way you think something would work, that doesn't mean that's what will actually bear out when you actually analyze uh, a medication or a drug or, or anything, right? That's why drugs or treatments don't get approved and put on market just with mechanistic data alone. They have to go through numerous phases, as you know, and one of those phases is case control studies, placebo, double blind, randomized controlled studies, where they have to actually analyze the drugs in large samples of population before they'll release them. And the reason for that is mechanistic explanations for how things work are not good enough. Okay. Uh, I just want to uh, just ask you again uh, one thing. So are you saying that there's absolutely no evidence at all that LDL is connected to atherosclerotic uh, cardiovascular disease? Uh, are, what's, your, what's, your, what's your perspective with respect to the evidence, not your opinion? I'm not interested in your opinion. Okay. The evidence is clear in terms of causality. There is no causal evidence. Okay. That's not my opinion. That's a scientific fact. The evidence is not there. What we have is a hypothesis. It's a hypothesis which is supported by a couple of things. One of those is a consensus, which has no value whatsoever and no place in science whatsoever. And in fact, it's corrupt and bastardized beyond belief. Uh, what else is there? There is epidemiology and Mendelian type studies which are inferential at best and do not actually deal with causality, which is important. I will disagree with you absolutely on this point. Causality is absolutely fundamental. Uh, and I will acknowledge your fact about drugs often having effects and working in ways that were not thought about or planned that may be serendipitous or otherwise. And I guess, you know, an obvious example of that is the mechanism by which the statin drugs work, which I'm sure we'll get to if we last that long. So my position is clear. My position is, as outlined in my position statement and my moot suggestion for this debate, which is, does LDL cholesterol cause atherosclerosis or does it not? The answer before we even start talking about mechanisms, is, well, there is no evidence that it does. Okay? So therefore, the mood becomes, okay, so what evidence is there that it does or does not? Okay, so that's that's what we're throwing around here. Okay, uh, well, I mean, I, I put toward, uh, I put to you a meta-analysis and, and uh, a high-level study that uh, in, in ca uh, captured uh, thousands and thousands of patients, and, and it disagrees with your statement. So it's actual research, European Heart Journal. And I have, okay, I have, okay. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. What I, thought, I, thought you, I, thought, I thought I thought you said no interruption. What happened to that? Because you go on for a very, very long time, and you're saying something that's not correct. Okay, but is, it, is the interruption allowed now? If it's allowed, then that's fine with me. But you, just let's clear the, clear the floor here. Is the interruption allowed or not allowed? Okay, you carry on. Yeah, all right. So, uh, yeah, for this um, study, and I, I think that that has to be analyzed, and I don't know if you want to do it now or you would do it at a later time. If you want to do it at a later time, that's totally fine. And I, I'd like to discuss the study with you and, and where you think the faults of the study are um, before we move on to, to more research. And, and I have more research I can present to you. Um, in, in terms of specifically what you're saying about LDL uh, not being a cause of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. I think what you said based on your last statement was that there's no evidence that LDL causes atherosclerotic disease. Um, I, 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 again, I would have to disagree with that based on the research I presented to you. Also, I, I don't know if you're aware of the PSK9 um, uh, studies where there's uh, patients that have gain-of-function mutations and PK, uh, PK, uh, PC, uh, K, KS9 uh, serine protease is more effective at down-regulating -re LDL uh, receptors. And in those patients, there's an increase in atherosclerotic disease. I have a study on that too I can post. Um, so it's, I think it's another strong study that, that 
elucidates, again, not as strong as the meta-analysis, but still an interesting study that elucidates the, the fact that LDL is, in fact, connected to atherosclerotic disease. Uh, and um, so I think, I think the, these kinds of studies need to be analyzed in these discussions. This is the point I'm talking about here, is you've made several different points there, and it's very, very difficult to answer more than one point without this going on all night and without me having to sit here and take notes, because you want to make two and three points instead of one point at a time. So let's deal with your first point. You talked about a meta-analysis that disagrees with me. Okay, what you did is you read out a statement from that paper written by the authors of that paper, where the authors of that paper state an opinion. What you didn't present is any empirical evidence in support of that statement. Just because that statement is in that paper and published, that doesn't confer correctness of that statement, does it? No, I, I, can, I can read the, uh, the methods and results of the entire analysis of the paper. They, they, it wasn't an opinion. It was, it was, the, it was the concentration and, and end conclusion based on research of 2 million patients, 2 million participants, and 20 million person years of follow-up. So it was okay. based does, on that. Does that paper say LDL cholesterol causes heart disease? Yeah, it does. The conclusion, and I'll read the conclusion to you again. It says, consistent evidence from numerous and multiple different types of clinical and genetic studies unequivocally establishes that LDL causes atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. That's the conclusion. Okay, what numbers is that based on? Uh, the numbers are uh, two, uh, the, the participants, you mean the methods? Is that what you're talking no, about? No, I mean the empirical evidence for that opinion statement because it is not there because they did not do a random research twins method would be the only way you could do it, okay? They have not experimentally proven their case. They had an inference However strong they might feel their inferences, nonetheless, it is an inference. It is not evidence. It is not scientific method to base conclusions on inference. Those authors have basically written an inappropriate statement there, and they've got to pass two peer reviewers and the editor of the journal. That's what happened there. That is not evidence. Evidence is empirical. You, if you're going to say this causes that, you better show me a clinical study that establishes that fact with all other confounds properly controlled and it needs to be properly powered and properly designed. Failing that, err. Okay, do you, want to, do you want to read through the study with me? Actually, we don't even need, uh, it, we have full access. We don't have to even pay for it. Everything's here. We can go through it and, and uh, see kind of where it fails, but like, I, I don't see, I don't see how a meta-analysis of numerous studies, whether they're epidemiological, whether they're Mendelian, I, I don't see how that constitutes no evidence. That doesn't make sense to me. It's a form of evidence. Uh, it's a strong form of evidence because of the uh, degree of power it has. So you saying it has, it, it's not evidence at all. When you have actually not even re read the paper, or not even familiar with the paper, I, I think that's erroneous. I don't need to read the paper. The key word here is causal. Sure. Inference yeah. is fine. If you want to say we have some inference here, if you want to say we have a hypothesis, that's fine. Okay, and we can talk about that inference and talk about the value of that inference, and I will poke every hole in it that you can possibly imagine because the inference is fucking ridiculous. If you want to say we have evidence for causality here, then you are on the wrong side of the ledger. You have broken the scientific discipline and you are making an inappropriate statement because the causal evidence does not exist. Yeah, so again, if you have a meta-analysis and you have numerous types of studies and they all point to the same conclusion, then you can have a level of confidence, a certain level of confidence to make that statement. And obviously, the level of confidence of these authors was high enough 
to make that concluding statement, right? It, we're, we're not looking at a single study involving 20 people or 50 people. We're looking at millions of people in this, in this study. And based on the variability of data, you can make a conclusion with a certain level of confidence, right? To me, the way you're analyzing this is very black and white. It's either true and accurate or it's completely garbage. And I, I think that the it, it's not the right way to analyze uh, scientific uh, research. The right way to analyze it is how confident are you that there is some merit to the findings or the research that's done, right? And that's why, we, as you know, we have uh, p-values and we have confidence mm -hmm. intervals uh, because science is not black and white, right? We have certain levels of uh, mm -hmm. understanding and confidence based on the research and the evidence that we have. And they were obviously sufficiently mm -hmm. satisfied mm -hmm. to come to the conclusion based on 2 million patients that, that LDL does cause atherosclerotic disease. And that's, an, that's a mistake. That's an error. They are okay. wrong. Okay. Well, Okay, why don't we go to another study? Uh, I, again, you're saying they're wrong, but you're not explaining why they're wrong. Uh, so that's, I, I, I don't know. Uh, sake, that. Charlie Brown, I am explaining why they're wrong. Actually, you're not. You haven't, yeah, you haven't actually presented I it. Am. You yeah, haven't... actually, I am. It's very, very clear. My position that I am taking here is about the evidence for causality. There isn't any. Therefore, we have a hypothesis. No, the there's hypothesis lots of evidence. Is open to debate. If you want to debate the hypothesis, the way to do that is to go to the fucking mechanisms. Can no. we go there? <laughs> That's uh, completely wrong, actually. It's t uh, totally wrong. No, so it's not completely wrong, you fucking so retard. It's not fucking wrong. Jesus Christ. Am I talking to somebody here that's got an IQ over 100? How did you get to be a fucking physician? Bart, just, just, just calm down, okay, man? Just relax. Well, you don't stop to being a fucking me. retard and listen to fucking sense, you fucktard. All right. All right. Just, just, just relax, Bart. Just, just calm down, okay? As you, know, as you 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 know, mechanistic speculation is not as strong as it's meta -analysis. not speculation. Mechanistic speculation is not as strong. Mechanism as meta is the only thing that is important. It's the only thing that explains <laughs> phenomena. We are here to talk about phenomena. We are here to talk about the phenomena of LDL and atherosclerosis. It requires you to talk mechanism. Let's go. Actually, it doesn't. And, and okay, we're done, done here. Goodbye. Bart, look, look, man. Let, let's let just just relax, man. Let's just have a let's have a civil discussion, man. Let's have a civil discussion. The the thing. Then let's talk mechanism. Let's go mechanism, mechanism, mechanism. Go. The pro yeah. The, the the problem is is that I can have a mech. I can speculate and say that oh this doesn't work so this shouldn't be possible but as you know mechanism is incredibly complex we often miss things we often don't see things that's why mechanism doesn't always bear out so let me ask you a question bart why why is it that we sometimes have a mechanistic understanding of uh, a, me a certain topic right whatever it is right and then when we actually research it, we actually study it, it doesn't bear out. We find out, oh, there's no statistical difference between the, the case and the control group. There's no st statistical difference between uh, the, the group that we're studying, the group that we're controlling for. You know, why, why is it that there's that discordance uh, between mechanistic data and, and uh, for example, RCTs? Why? Do you want to talk mechanism? Of atherogenesis, or do you not? But but can you answer my question first? Your question is completely fucking irrelevant. It's got no bearing on what we are here to discuss. And what we are here to discuss is: can you establish that there is even a reasonable mechanism?
by which allele might even potentially play a causal role in atherogenesis, and I'm here to discuss with you the fact that there isn't. Okay, so do you want to change your statement then to, to there's no mechanism for it as opposed to no evidence? No, I don't want to change my statement. My statement is clear and it's well, based on words chosen very carefully over many years. My statement is clear. There is no evidence for causality between LDL cholesterol and atherogenesis in human beings. Yeah, but 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 the additional but then, but then, point of interest, yeah. something that you and I can discuss if you'd ever stop dodging me on it, is we can talk about the mechanisms by which atherogenesis occurs. And that will blow another hole or another several holes and will actually flamethrower the whole LDL argument. I wonder why you're avoiding doing that. Should we do that or should we not do it? I'm avoiding doing that because we haven't gotten past the first level of evidence of the best evidence we have, which is meta-analysis. Because it's not the best evidence. We don't agree on it. And I'm the senior scientist, okay? I'm the guy that's here to tell you you're mistaken. You're sadly mistaken. You've been led up the garden path. The hierarchy of evidence is absolute fucking nonsense. So wait a minute. Let me ask you a question. So you're saying that the mechanistic explanations and data is more important than a meta-analysis. Is that what you're saying? Oh, my God. Yes. Okay. Well, what you're saying is not scientific, unfortunately. Who's the senior scientist of the two of us? Just because someone's senior doesn't Who's mean you're the not senior wrong. senior scientist of the two of us? Just because they're your senior doesn't mean you're not, not wrong. scientific, Charlie Brown. You back it up with some credentials, okay? Have you got a list of publications as long as you're fucking... Have you ever actually... Have you people? got a list of publications as long as your arm? Have you ever actually treated... No, you don't. Have you acted as peer reviewer for three separate journals? No, you fucking haven't. Have you actually... Have yeah, you taught more pre-med students than you've had hot dinners? No, you fucking haven't. I have. You will give me some goddamn respect. Don't tell me what is scientific and what is not, Charlie Brown. <laughs> <laughs> Bart, sorry man, sorry. Bart, look, I can say the same thing to you, man. I can say, have you ever treated patients? Have you ever prescribed medications? Have you actually, have you ever actually practiced medicine? You've taught pre-med med students, but have you ever been a medical doctor yourself? You haven't. So you, you so you've. You, we are here to discuss science, Charlie Brown. Science, and you're telling me about science, and you can fuck off because I'm the one who's here to tell you about science. Okay, I'll, I'll make a deal with you, Bart. I'll make a deal with you. I will talk a mechanism with you if you change your statement because I don't accept your statement that there's no evidence that LDL causes cardiovascular disease. If you want to change your statement that there's no, mecha there's no mechanistic explanation for why LDL causes atherosclerotic disease, then I'll, then I'll engage with you in the, in the mechanism. But if you don't change your statement, I'm not going to engage with you. Okay, we're done here. All right. But Bart, you know, ask any medical doctor, ask ask anybody who practices Don't medicine. Don't give a fuck. We're done here. Goodbye. A ask anybody who practices medicine. And the, the thing that the thing that you start with in a discussion is the strongest evidence you have. You never start with mechanism. Because I can say because Bart, Bart, look, I can say that a certain Oh, LDL gets absorbed into monocytes and they become modified, they become oxidized, they become macrophages. You will disagree. You'll say, no, no, this cytokine doesn't do that. So because this cytokine doesn't do that, it can never happen. But the problem is, Bart, as you know, the, 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 the mechanistic detail is hyper complex. You know, we're probably missing half the cytokines that are involved in the inflammatory macrophage pathway. You know, I love, I love Matt, uh, Matt I love mechanism i love apoptosis i love caspase uh, pathways i love all that stuff bart you and me bart you and me are not too, as dissimilar as you think i i'm with you man i love mechanism i love pathophysiology if you and me sit down and we talk about golion and rapid review and we talk about you know uh, lymphocytes and, and macrophages and monocytes and and i i did a whole course on just on extracellular matrix and cytoskeleton you know so i absolutely love mechanism bart 
and and we're not too dissimilar. You know, uh, I wish we could meet and have a you know more friendly discussion. I really wish we could. But, but that would require is, you to show some goddamn respect to a senior scientist and stop telling me about science and what's good science and what's bad science and listen to me when I tell you what's bad science and what's good science and then engage with me in a discussion when I invite one straight away rather than pissing around for 15 minutes and then just randomly saying, well, this side of kind, that side of kind, the other side of kind. Okay, great. If you wanted to talk about that, you had your opportunity. Instead, you wanted to treat with me with disrespect and tell me you know more about science than I do. In which case, you can go and fuck yourself. Art, you haven't been respectful to him yourself, dude. You Bye. Hey, 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 leave it to me. Just let Bart and Ricky talk. Okay. Yeah, man, Bart, Bart, hold on, hold on, man. One second, one second. So, oh, did he leave? He left. All right. Okay, well, see, okay, here's the thing. Yeah, he left. The thing is, is I really want to get into mechanism. I, I love mechanism so much. I was going to actually post this. Hold on. Ricky, I was, right I was, I was, I was, I was, uh, is he back? Uh, no, no. No, your mic yeah. is cut out. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, I wanted to post this picture. See this picture of oxidized LDL, and it and it goes into the macrophages, it becomes foamy cells, becomes an atheroma. It has the atheromatous cap. Like, uh, man, I love mechanisms so much. I love pathophysiology so much. It's my favorite aspect of medicine. That's what's ironic about it. But the problem with going there is it just derails the whole conversation because you can't you can't focus on precise specific you know, cytokines and signaling molecules and, and these all these kinds of things because the end point is what matters, right? Why, why do I care if LDL gets oxidized and up, uptaken into a cell if, if it, or, or it doesn't get uptaken, for example, if it is killing people, you know? I could say, oh, mechanistically, wait a minute, LDL doesn't get oxidized, that doesn't happen. Then when I do the research and then they study uh, millions of patients and they say, hey, there's a linear correlation between LDL and, and total cholesterol going up and increased cardiovascular disease. So, so what's going on, right? That's why you can't rely on mechanism. That's why mechanism is weak, right? Mechanism helps us to inform where we might go in science and where we might research and where we might investigate. But the thing that trumps all is high level scientific evidence, you know, because that's what actually dictates through statistical analysis, what the end clinical effect is on patients. And I think that's the problem with Bart is I, you know, I, I even though he was disrespectful, I, I appreciate Bart's position because he has a lot of knowledge, obviously, in with respect to mechanism. But because of that, that's also his hindrance. He doesn't realize the importance of the end clinical research. That's where that, that where people like me are, we're sitting at the end point where, where the clinical stuff is and we're using the clinical stuff. That's where things really make a difference, right? There's invariable countless times where I learned a mechanism in, in, in medical school and we say, okay, it should be this way. And then when we go further in our education, we go to high level evidence, it, it, they say, oh, there's no, this, there's no difference. It doesn't matter. You know, it's such a common theme. And I think that Bart, because of his background, he 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 fails at that aspect. He he doesn't. He he's too hung up on mechanism and not open enough to to analyzing end, end clinical research, endpoint clinical research. You know, do I care if LDL gets absorbed by a macrophage? Maybe I care, but what do I care about more, that or people dying because they're eating too much garbage and their and their LDL is too high? And 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 then the other the other thing just for the just for everybody here. I know the debate's over, but I just want to say the other thing I kind I, I, I did mention, I had a lot more studies to mention, but the other thing I mentioned was, and it's kind of a mess, mechanistic explanation. So, and actually Richard always mentions this in his, his uh, talks as well. So the thing with LDL cholesterol is it has receptors, right? That, that absorb it from the liver uh, and, and the intestine. And those receptors are very important because those receptors absorb uh, the cholesterol and essentially uh, take it out of the bloodstream, so it doesn't cause, doesn't go, basically gunk up your arteries and give you a heart attack. Now, there's a certain protease, or so, sorry, sorry, let me go back here. There's a certain protein 
It's called PCSK9. And what that protein does is it breaks down the receptor and, and it mm -hmm. transports it and, and gets rid of it, essentially, but it brings it into the liver and gets rid of it. So you can't sop up and absorb as much cholesterol. Your cholesterol level essentially starts to go up and it can't be uh, you know, appropriately uh, recycled and taken care of. What happens to those patients that have too much of that protein? They have too much PCSK9. It's too strong. What happens is they get more heart attacks. They get more heart attacks. They get more heart failure. They get more heart disease. And the reason for that is very clear. Their LDL receptors are going away. They're not being, they're not able to deal with the cholesterol properly. And then everything gets gunked up. All the cholesterol starts rising. And then you get this inflammatory process that I posted in the, uh, in the uh, general, if you want to see the actual mechanism of LDL uh, causing it. And I actually have a whole paper on, um, on mechanisms of LDL causing atherogenesis. Uh, it is, it's a recognized atherogenic particle. But the reason I didn't want to go there is because it, it would just be a derailing that would be totally useless because he would just say, oh, this cytokine doesn't do this, so therefore the mechanism uh, is irrelevant and therefore it can't happen. But actually, buddy, when you look at 2 million people, it does happen, you know, it is correlated, you know, so uh, yeah, it's it's unfortunate that uh, the, the debate went that way, but uh, what can you do? Ricky, I love you. Do you have anything <laughs> else that you just want to say about this topic or about BART in general? Because I think like Vegan Games and I are probably going to upload this. So if you have any like doctor's words you want for the world, you know, uh, anything else or have you said all you want? Yeah, I mean, I just want to say that, um, like, when you, when, if you're a scientist and you want to engage in science, and I guess this is for everybody, I was telling uh, Isaac this before, when it comes to nutrition and things like that, I mean, everybody seems to have an opinion with my patients too. They come in, uh, vaccines are a classic topic. They come in, they say, oh, I'm so worried about this vaccine. I'm so worried about this. I, I, I watched this YouTube video. I watched this documentary. I had this mechanism, you know, or high level, well, higher level people like Bart who are saying, oh, I'm so worried about this mechanism. It doesn't, it doesn't explain this. My, my advice to all of those people, not that I'm so great or not at all. I, I'm just, I'm just a normal guy. I'm just a normal doc. That's all I am. But my advice is when you're having a scientific discussion, start with high level evidence, put your evidence on the table. I'll put my evidence on the table that vaccines are safe, for example, or that LDL cholesterol causes disease. You put your evidence on the table and then let's get into the evidence. Let's get into the analysis of why that's wrong rather than resorting to authority, rather than resorting to uh, mechanistic speculation, rather than resorting to YouTube documentaries or, oh, I, this person said this or Robert De Niro said this about vaccines. That stuff's not helpful. What is helpful is statistical analysis and high level rigorous study that's been peer reviewed by scientific journals. That's what's helpful. And I tell that to my patients too. I never, never tell them not to ask me questions or not to challenge me. I love when my patients challenge me because then we can both sit down, we open up up to date or Google Scholar, we together look at the research and then I show them, this is what the research shows. And then at that point, if you're like Bart and you are somehow refuting that based on authority or based on some kind of uh, sky force or whatever your refutation point of refutation is, then I walk away from the discussion because you're not being scientific. And in that case, Bart was not being scientific. So that's my advice to everybody. That's all I have to say. Thanks so much, Ricky. Okay, no problem. Well, I think that's it. And whoever recorded that, please DM me in my inbox and then I'll friend you so you can send it to me and we can get it up on the internet. Have a good night, guys.